Ancestry Library Edition is Ancestry's public use library subscription made available to library customers at no charge through many libraries and genealogy research facilities. A brief overview of this database is available on the Midwest Genealogy Center website at midwestgenealogycenter.org in the More Info link accessed by following the steps shown at the bottom of this slide. Midcontinent Public Library account holders, this is also the path you will follow to access the database itself, selecting the Browse Databases button in the Genealogy Research tile on the MGC homepage and then selecting the Ancestry Library Edition tile from the collection of genealogy databases displayed. Make sure you have your library card handy. At some point, you will be asked to enter your library card to proceed. Ancestry Library Edition is typically an in-library use only database, meaning you will most often have to visit the library or research facility to use this database. While the record collection is accessible through both Ancestry Library Edition and Ancestry.com are largely the same, there are some other significant differences between the two databases. Again, Ancestry Library Edition is the free version available through many libraries and genealogy research centers. While using Ancestry Library Edition, you can review and print or save records like a census, immigration, and many vital records, but you cannot upload your personal information or create a family tree in the Library Edition of this database. You will also be able to view the public trees others have created but you do not have access to any tree owner's contact information unless you are a paid Ancestry.com subscriber. Remember that to access Ancestry Library Edition, you will have to start with your library's website, not the Ancestry.com page. Ancestry.com is a paid subscription database. Designed for individual and personal use, Ancestry.com users can upload and maintain family trees and collaborate with other subscribers. Ancestry.com also has other features such as Ancestry Academy, which is a large collection of tutorial videos, and tabs that connect you to Ancestry products such as Ancestry DNA and Ancestry Health. The Passenger and Immigration List Index, known as the Philbies, is also available through the Ancestry.com account, but not on the Ancestry Library Edition. The Ancestry Library Edition homepage includes two access points to general searches, Search and Begin Searching, and a number of tiles and quick links that access specific data collections, such as the U.S. Federal Census, Vital, Military, and Immigration Records, as you can see on this slide, and quick links to categories such as public member trees, city directories, and more. We're going to begin our first demonstration at the green Begin Searching box to get a better look at some of the search options you have while using Ancestry Library Edition. The green Begin Searching button on the Ancestry Library Edition homepage takes us to this search page where we'll begin the search for our ancestor in one of three ways. Briefly, these search options allow you to search all categories, which is marked at star number one, to explore records by location, star number two, and to explore records by collection or collection group, star number three. Let's look at each of these individually, beginning with number one, an all category search. For this video demonstration, we're going to focus our searches on two famous Walters, Walter Disney and Walter Cronkite. We begin our all-category search by filling in Walt Disney's first and last name and his place of birth, Chicago, Illinois. As you type the name of a place, like Chicago, Ancestry Library Edition will offer suggested county, state, and country names to complete the entry as shown in the drop-down here. Since different types of records were collected and maintained by different entities, we want to always try to provide the full listing of city and county and state and country if applicable whenever possible. And Ancestry Library Edition's drop-down menu can help us do just that. 
We can either begin our search of Ancestry Library Editions databases with just Walt's name and a place of residence, or we can click on the word Show More Options shown in the blue next to the blue search button to expand the search window to allow us to add more search parameters such as names of parents, a spouse, siblings, and or children, or additional dates and places that pertain to that ancestor. Note, the more information you provide, the fewer the results you'll receive. This can be helpful if your ancestor had a common name and you need to target your results, but do not feel you must fill in every blank. Sometimes less is more. If you're unsure of your ancestor's birth year, you can also use the birth year calculator next to the birth year box to let Ancestry Library Edition do the math for you. It will prompt you to fill in your ancestor's age at a specific point in time and then it subtracts to approximate a date of birth for that ancestor. For example, Disney was 65 years old when he passed away in 1966. By plugging this information into the birth year calculator, the computer will estimate Walt's year of birth as 1901. Ancestry Library Edition search engine is set up to display the most relevant results first. To look more closely at one of the records, we can hover over the blue title to see a preview of the information in the record or click on the blue title to open the record for full viewing. Before we look at one of Walt's results, however, let's talk filters. Since our initial basic search gave us over 8,000 results, we're probably going to want to um, go back and either provide more information about Walt to cast off some unrelated results or use the filter shown to the left of the screen to focus the results on a specific record category, location, or date of interest to our research. We can easily add search parameters by clicking on the pencil shown circled on this slide. This will allow us to provide additional information about our Walt such as the names of his parents, siblings, wife, or children or dates and places of marriage, death, or other key events. In this same search filters section, we could also adjust the bullseye settings to require the results to be more exactly match, uh, matches in the spelling of Walt's name or the place of birth we've already provided. Right now, those bullseyes are set to broad allowing the computer to display results that are mostly what we've specified. As we drag the bullseye to the right, we direct the computer to get increasingly more selective with the results displayed. Remember, however, that spelling and geographic locations are often inconsistently recorded in genealogical research, so be very careful when selecting exact matches. Bullseyes to the far right in searches like this it is typically not a good idea. Before we move on, these results offer an interesting reminder of the challenges of genealogy. The top two Cook County, Illinois birth certificates index results show our Walt listed with the correct parents, Flora Call and Elias Disney, and a 30th of December, 1890 date of birth. The third entry is our Walt's World War II draft registration, listing his brother Roy O. Disney, his 1942 Los Angeles residence, and a 5th of December 1901 date of birth. When we discuss the need to be flexible later in this presentation, please remember this example. This slide shows the information initially displayed when we selected the World War II draft card entry for the results of our Walter Disney search. Please note three things. Number one, the indexed result shown here includes the image of the original document in the top left, which you can open and view in Ancestry Library Edition. While the indexed slash non-handwritten version is easier to read, you should always take advantage of the opportunity to read the original for additional information and possible errors in the indexing process. Number two, the source citation tab, which is circled here at the top, lets us know the owner of the original record. In this case, the National Archives and Records Administration, or NARA, 
If the image was not available to view immediately, we might be able to use this source citation to locate the original for viewing elsewhere. And number three, if you decide that you want to keep this result for your collection, you can save the indexed record by clicking on the green Send Document button, which sends this record to the email you provide. You can also print the indexed record using your computer's print function or Control P, Command Control P for Max. Your, you can print to PDF to save this record electronically. Finally, you can also click on the print link top right to access and print save a printer friendly version of the same information. Before we move on to our next Walter, let's take a look at Walt Disney's original World War II draft registration document and discuss some of the Ancestry Library Edition tools available for use when viewing original documents. X's and arrows. The X, shown in the top left corner of this image, will return you to the indexed version of this result, and your browser's left-facing arrow, which is not shown here, will take you back to the list of results for this particular search. Images like this draft registration are typically portions of microfilm or fish, which, thanks to the indexing process, call up as search results based on the information provided in the search. Carrots or arrows to the left and right of the image allow you to scroll forward and backwards through the microfilmed images to view information on the preceding and following pages. This is particularly important with census records where you'll want to review a few pages ahead and behind your ancestors' entries to see who else lived in the neighborhood. Toolbar. The most often used tools on the right side toolbar are the plus and minus, which enlarge and reduce tool and the tools icon, where you will want to go print, download, or modify the appearance of an image. We will get to more about printing in our next slide. In the top right corner of an image, like this draft registration, you'll see a save button which allows you to email this original document to yourself or others or to save the image to your computer. New users quickly learn that your computer's control or command plus P shortcut does not always print the desired results when working with original images in Ancestry Library Edition. To print or download original images in this database, you need to select the Tools icon discussed previously. Within this icon, you'll find options to help you customize your print or download as indicated on this slide. A quick note to those new to genealogy and a reminder to the rest of us all, always cite your sources. When printing or saving an original document, make sure you record the source of the original document. Do not just note that you got it from Ancestry. Ancestry Library Edition connects us to these resources, but it is not the source of the information. For example, if you save a marriage license, make sure you record the exact county marriage record, volume, and page where the original license was found and subsequently filmed. This source data will allow you or others down the road to retrace your steps and authenticate your research. If you'll remember, we began with the green Begin Searching button on the home page, which took us to this search page where we began our all-category search for Walter Disney. Let's take a brief look at the second type of search available on this page, the Explore by Location search, and also under number two. Note that all 50 states are available for this search, plus the District of Columbia and U.S. territories. Directly under the map, you'll also see all the continents except for Australia, which is included in the Oceania group along with the available records for New Zealand, Samoa, Fiji, Tonga, and the Cook Islands, and Antarctica. So we've selected Missouri to demonstrate the results of a location search. Note that the results shown are the collections available in the Ancestry Library Edition for the location not the people who live in that location. 
The results displayed indicate the number of records in each collection title. You can access each collection directly from this list by clicking the blue collection title or the collection drop-down menu, partially displayed here to the left, to tailor your search to a specific type of collection for this location. Another way to use this location search is found directly under the name of the location you've selected, in this case Missouri. Clicking the gray link labeled View All Missouri Research Options, circled here in red, um, it will direct you to a different view of these searchable collections sorted by category and by region. Let's view all Missouri research options to get a better look at this helpful function. So again, the path we followed to this searchable data collection was Ancestry Library Edition homepage, Begin Searching, Explore by Location, Missouri. Then, View All Missouri Research Options, Missouri Birth, Marriage and Death Collection, Missouri U.S. Death Certificates 1910 to 1969. It's of note that the Ancestry website still has to 1969, but the records are available to 1973. Three things to note. The collections of each location vary greatly, so take the time to explore the collections of the places of most interest to you. In this specific case, the Missouri Death Certificates on the Missouri Secretary of State's Missouri Digital Heritage currently extend through 1973, so this might not be the best place to look for Missouri Ancestors Death Certificates, but with well over 4 million records, it is a great place to start and the related data collections noted on the right sidebar may also extend your research considerably. Ancestry is constantly adding records and collections to their database. Remember to check back regularly to see if anything new has been added to the resources for your ancestors' locations. Once more, we're back to the search page accessed by the green Begin Searching button on the Ancestry Library Edition homepage. We've already completed a general all category search, star number one, and explored by location, star number two. Now let's look at our third option, Explore by Collection, shown to the far right as star number three. Ancestry Library Edition's collections groups are shown here. You can search all categories within a group by clicking on the group heading or target your search on a specific category by selecting a collection within the group. For our next example, we're going to access the U.S. Federal Census Collection found in the Census and Voters List group. But before we begin, let's take a moment to discuss the U.S. Federal Census and its use in genealogy. Census Basics some of you are new to genealogy, so it's worth a moment to address just a few elements of census research. If you're interested in learning more about using the census for genealogy, please access our free census records research class in the online learning section of the Midwest Genealogy Center's website. Currently, in the United States federal censuses from 1790 to 1950 are available for public access. Each remaining United States federal census will become available 72 years after the census was taken. 1850, first to list all household members. 1890, mostly lost to fire, water, damage after the fire. Other censuses include state, territorial, special population censuses like the Indian censuses, slave schedules, non-population schedules, and more. Note that most, but not all, of these other censuses are available on the Ancestry Library Edition. Features. So as you saw with Walter Disney Search, Ancestry Library Edition contains an Every Name Index, which allows us to enter the name of the head of household or other listed household member, and then allow the database's search function to locate relevant, relevant results for us. Once you identify the search result you need, you can again send, print, download the index copy, or better still, 
Look at the original census page and send, print, download that record for your files using the same tools we discussed in our earlier example. The challenges. All censuses come with challenges such as issues with the spelling of names and inconsistencies with the ages and even birthplaces of those who were enumerated. When searching for these records in an online database, you might also encounter issues in the indexing of the information collected so many years ago. Solutions? Be flexible. Accept inconsistencies as part of genealogy. Remember Walt's 1890 and also his 1901 dates of birth? And get creative if your ancestors appear to go missing for a census or two. Try searching for them by their middle name or look for a family group with the correct given names living in the same household instead of searching by a surname. Now on to our census search demonstration. The images you see on this slide are those displayed immediately after selecting U.S. Federal Census Collection from the Census and Voter List group in the Explore by Collection column found on the right of the Ancestry Library Edition search page. You have the option of searching the entire section of Federal Census Records by filling in search fields at the top of the page which are shown here to the right or you can focus your search on a specific census by selecting that census from the list found beneath the search fields on that web page. Our next goal today is to locate Walter Cronkite in the 1930 United States Federal Census. We're going to start the search by selecting the 1930 census from the list and then since we know that adding too many details may adversely limit the results We'll enter just Walter's name, birth year, which is 1916, and state of birth, Missouri, in the search fields. Once we see the number of results we receive, we can always edit the search to add more information to focus the search if necessary. Before we review the results of our search for the young Walter, let's talk some tips and search options. You can capitalize names or not capitalize them. The results will be the same. Use the match all terms exactly and or select the exact match box, both circled here with great caution. When you tick these boxes, the search engine will disregard any listings that were not spelled or listed exactly as you entered them in the search field making it very possible that you'll never be presented with some records that might have been of use to your research. You can opt to omit the first middle names, but if you enter only the surname, be pre prepared to fill in additional fields elsewhere to avoid coming up with too many unrelated results. Be aware that census enumerators recorded what they heard. If your ancestors were immigrants from non-English speaking countries, consider how the enumerator might have spelled the names he heard when he came to gather information for their household. Behindthename.com is a helpful site for alternate spellings of immigrant names. If you're pretty sure you know where your ancestors lived in a particular census year, but you can't find them there, consider using the Browse This Collection option to the right of the screen. This allows you to call up all the pages of a particular district, city, county, census to perform a page-by-page -page search of the data collected that year. While time-consuming, this might be the only way to locate relatives whose names were too poorly written or spelled to be picked up by the indexing process. Ancestry products also allow the use of wildcards in our searches to bypass problematic spelling of names. For example, the asterisk will replace one character. So if you're looking for a name such as Frank, Frankie, put in F-R-A-N asterisk and you'll get results back for Fran, Frank, Franny, Frankie, Franny with an IE, Francis, etc. You have to at least have three letters to start. 
the question mark, it replaces one character. So maybe you're searching for Johnson, but you don't know if it's S-O-N or S-E-N. So you can type in J-O-H-N-S question mark N, and it'll display the results. You can even use both wildcards within the same name. So here are the top six of the 11 results from our 1930 U.S. Federal Census search for Walter Cronkite, born 1916 in Missouri. Remember that the Ancestry Library Edition search engine sequences results from best match on down. And in fact, the first result shows a 13-year-old Walter Cronkite living in Houston in 1930. Since the 13-year-old would have been born around 1916, and since this, Walter's birthplace, is listed as Missouri, this is looking like a result to review further. Each of the other results differs from our search criteria in birth year, birthplace, etc. So as we did with Walt Disney Search, we can use the mouse to hover over the blue view record for this first result to see more details. Click on View Record to open the indexed record or go directly to the original image by selecting the blue image at the far right of the listing. For this example, we're going to click View Record and view the indexed record. Since all Ancestry Library Edition searches function pretty much the same, let's use this Walter Cronkite census result to review some database features previously introduced. So number one, there's an option to view and then print, download, save the original record. Number two, source citation. Where did the original come from? Number three, there's an option to send the indexed record home via email. And number four is the option to print or print to a PDF the indexed record. The big Ancestry Library Edition bonus is highlighted by the red box to the far right. Once you select a record to review, like this 1930 U.S. Federal Census record, the search engine will, whenever possible, produce a list of suggested records that also match your ancestor's information. While this bonus list must always be scrutinized to ensure that the search engine has, in fact, found additional records for your Walter Cronkite and not another one with a similar name and birth date or place. This suggested records section can help us quickly access and review additional records, potentially extending our research for these ancestors. And guess what? It gets better. So by now, you might have realized that the blue text opens options. After reviewing the suggested records for the then 13-year-old Walter Cronkite, you can select another family member, like Walter's mother, Helen Cronkite, from the blue list of others living in the household found at the bottom of the record. Once you select Helen's name from the list, her name moves up to the top of the screen and her information from the same 1930 U.S. Federal Census is displayed. Additionally, the suggested records to the right of the records change to match Helen's information, date, place of birth, etc., allowing us to potentially jump back one more generation in our research. Again, remember that suggested records are just that, suggestions. You will need to review each record to see if it aligns with your other research. As you get to know Ancestry or Ancestry Library Edition, you'll learn that there are often a number of ways to arrive at the same record sets. For example, in addition to the navigation bar search we've been using so far and a card catalog search we'll see in a moment, the United States Federal Census records can also be accessed in at least three different places from the Ancestry Library Edition homepage as shown on this slide. Take note, Ancestry changes their homepage frequently to feature different record sets and beta test features like Story Scout, which is start here. So be flexible. Handouts and the images on this slide 
may be slightly different than what you see when you log on. For our last example, we're going to search for a record set rather than a person. The Ancestry Library Edition card catalog is most easily accessed from the New Collections link on the black navigation bar. You can search the catalog for an exact record collection title or use a keyword search, like birth certificates, to see which, if any, related collections can be found in Ancestry Library Edition. You can also filter by collection on the left to narrow your search results to a specific collection group. If you find something of interest, you can then click on the blue title to search for your ancestor's name in that specific collection. Note not only the titles of these record collections, but also the number of records in each to help determine the likelihood of finding your ancestor's records in the collection. The sort by function allows you to research a title or search for a title, date added, total record count, or date updated, which is particularly helpful for anyone wanting to monitor new Ancestry Library Edition holdings. This slide outlines some of the larger collections found on Ancestry Library Edition. For example, this database currently includes just short of 1.9 billion searchable public member trees, nearly 1.4 billion U.S. city directories ranging from 1822 to 1995, and well over 850 million school yearbooks. Note that some of Ancestry Library Edition's international records are written in the language of that country, such as birth and baptismal records, and that GNET tree index shown here. Ancestry Library Edition also has something called the Learning Center. You can access research aids through the Learning Center tab on the black navigation bar. These aids will include tips and tricks on a variety of topics, sometimes short informative PDFs, and it is all located at the top black navigation bar. In addition to the sources in the Ancestry Library Edition Learning Center, there is also a category for maps. Within these, you can find county resources and maps, vital records too, land and probate records, family history research, research guides, and all sorts of other possibilities to explore. Last, but you know, certainly not least, you can take advantage of previously posted information about a variety of family research and genealogy topics by searching the boards for your family name of another topic of choice through the message boards tab on the black navigation bar. Your Ancestry Library Edition access will allow you to read only access to these posts. With your Ancestry.com account, you can respond to already existing posts as well as create new ones. To access other Ancestry's blogs, social media links, and YouTube videos, go to either of the two links shown on this page. The circled Ancestry blog link can be found at the very bottom of the Ancestry.com, not Ancestry Library Edition, homepage. You do not need an Ancestry subscription to view these posts or tutorials. When you are ready to take the next step, check out other free tutorial videos on the Midwest Genealogy Center's website, also at MidwestGenealogyCenter.org. And while you are there on the website, click the Events link and tab and go to the MGC homepage to register for upcoming virtual classes and programs. Thank you for tuning in and watching and listening to Ancestry Library Edition presented by the Midwest Genealogy Center. If you need to reach out to us, you can find our homepage at midwestgenealogycenter.org. Give us a call at 816-252 7228 or send in a request or question at our email at mgc at my
mcpl.org. Thank you.